as a homeowner, uh, doing your own home projects, sometimes uh, front entryways, doors, sliders, those types of things um, come up and, and become part of your project, which is awesome. And on this particular video, I want to touch just on egress doors. We'll, we'll dive into um, other types of, of access doors, sliders, and etc. a little down the road and what those little code requirements might be. Uh, but as far as an egress door, all dwelling units. So a dwelling unit could be anywhere where you might sleep. So apartments, townhouses, uh, single family residences, duplexes, anything, right? Anywhere where you sleep that's a dwelling unit, um, you would need an egress door, at least one. And that egress door has specific requirements to it so that you can safely get in and out of it in case of an emergency so that you don't trip, fall, hurt yourself, and so on. Uh, if it's a remodel, if this is kind of a home project, I assume that your door opening is already set. You might just be replacing it, which is great. Replace it like for like. Uh, but if you're maybe putting a deck on the front or you're trying to figure out steps and requirements, types like that, um, I'll try to help you out here with a little bit of information straight from the code book. Requirements first on size. So you're required to have 32 inches clear opening with the door open. So if the door is at 90 degrees, and you measure from the door to the door stop, so clear opening, you should have 32 inches. Most of the time, builders put in a 36 inch front door. It could be a side door. It could be a back door. The requirement just says it has to escape to the uh, to a yard or a public way. So you could designate your egress door to be pretty much any access that you want, as long as it's a swing hinge door. It cannot be a slider um, because an emergency, you're going to have to get in and out of it fast, you know, turn the knob in and out the way you go. Now, when it comes to a front door, they prefer, you know, it's just landing on each side. Obviously, if you're walking into the house on the inside of it, you know, usually the door swings in. You're going to step right onto a flat surface. There's no step, no change in grade. That would be considered a landing. The landing itself needs to be a minimum of the width of the door and 36 inches deep. Now, like I said, on the inside, usually not an issue. It's the outside that sometimes can be a little bit of a pain or not necessarily a pain, but just a thought process on steps and in and out of it. The requirement on your egress door, so again, we're only talking about your main door, the door that you designate as your egress door, can have up to one step down. That's it. Seven and three quarters is your max riser height. So you can go down from your threshold seven and three quarters before you have to have a landing. Obviously, it's safer to have a flat surface right outside the door but maybe your house has a grade away from it down to the street or something or you're working on some steps just remember to put or maybe even if you're putting a deck right there if your deck the way everything lays out you need to drop your deck down just one riser height seven and three quarters so make sure that your deck if you have a concrete steps pavers anything like that seven and three quarters that's the max uh, amount that you can drop which is one riser one step below the threshold and the threshold is you know the metal part that the door swings over that you st you might step on so you measure from there seven and three quarters should be good to go just make sure you got a landing on both sides again on the outside max down one step and that landing would go three feet in the width of the door so if you have multiple steps you do that landing and then go you know however many steps down you need you could hit another landing uh, you know, you could work your way down. If you hop over to the video on um, guardrails and handrails, that'll dive into how many steps you can go before you would have to install a handrail. And depending on if there's a drop off on either side, uh, one guardrail would be required. Especially if you have like a front entry deck or something like that, that you're going to walk out onto. But depending on how high you are, you might have to put up guardrails and handrails and so on and so forth. But as far as your egress door, just make sure that you kind of cover those same bases. 32 inches wide, clear opening, landing on both sides, max one step down on the outside. So let's hop over to the actual code. We'll cruise through this real fast just so that you kind of have an idea where I'm pulling this information from. So means of egress, so dwellings, like I said, any, anywhere where you may sleep, uh, where you dwell, where you cook, where you eat, where, where you reside is a dwelling. 
So dwelling shall be provided with a means of egress in accordance with this section. Um, let's see here. The means of egress shall provide continuous and un unobstructed path of vertical and horizontal egress travel from all portions of the dwelling uh, without traveling through the garage. So you can't go through the garage and then have to open the garage door or go through the garage and then go out a side door. It's got to be one access to the outside. The required e egress door shall open directly into the public way or to a yard or court that opens to a public way. So you wouldn't want it to dive into, say, the back yard that's completely fenced in with no gates to get out. Now you could argue that if you if you run into the um, to your backyard, but then you've got a gate to get into the alleyway, well, then you have a way to get to the public way, and that would probably be considered your egress door. Uh, like I said, though, you can't use sliders, so your back door onto a deck, then down on downstairs, and then off. That would not necessarily work. That would not meet the requirements of an egress door. Uh, not less than one egress door shall be provided for each dwelling unit. Here's where it talks about side hinge door, and not less than 32 inches measured between the face of the door and the stop. So it's just clear opening. And we're talking about um, height. I didn't, doors, if you're getting a, a, a pre-frame door, they kind of come with the height. It's kind of set for you, door heights. But it says not less than 78 inches in height. Usually exterior doors have the frame fully built in with the threshold. So height's not really that big of a deal. Um, let's see here. Other doors shall not be required to comply with the minimum dimensions. So again, when you get away from this one egress door, if you have a side door or a back door, sliders, those, those are a little bit different. Uh, floors and landings, there shall be a landing uh, or floor on each side of the exterior door. So that's like I was saying. Each side, usually you're going to walk right into your house and it's just flat. That's your landing. Outside, just make sure you've got it covered 36 inches deep. Um, then we talk about elevation. So... Here it says floor elevations as required e at the required egress doors. So landings or finished floors. So this is where code gets confusing and I try not to confuse homeowners, but I just do want to make sure that you kind of see where I'm pulling this out of the code book. And uh, so landings or finished floors that are that at the required egress door shall be not more than an inch and a half lower than the top of the threshold. Okay, well, I just told you it was seven and three quarters. Well, they put an exception in here. It said the landing or floor on the exterior side shall be not more than seven and three quarters below the top of the threshold provided the door does not swing over the landing or floor. Which in most circumstances, in your front door, your egress door is usually always going to swing in. So it's a non-issue in, in that aspect. But if there's an instance where your front door does pull out, well then, yeah, you would need that landing to be flat and flush with that threshold. So keep that in mind as you're working on your project. And if you're putting in new doors and you're putting in a new front egress door or a side egress door, or you want to just make sure, maybe you got a couple of them and you just want to make sure that they're safe, just kind of follow those general dynamics and, and that'll kind of help you take care of um, your egress door. So if we kind of keep going now into, I want to dive into like the secondary doors. So you kind of have an understanding on that as well. So secondary doors, generally the same. They can be any size, right? They can be a slider. Uh, they can hop out just onto a deck. The deck can have no stairs. Maybe it does have stairs. They can go out onto a patio. When it comes to entering though, there is a couple requirements as far as how many risers can you have? Well, it's two. So you can have two risers at seven and three quarters. So two steps, essentially. And uh, when you're talking risers, though, you're talking about if, the, if you had like a slider, you'd go down seven and three quarters. You'd have a step and down another seven and three quarters. So it's really kind of one step, but it provides two riser heights, if that makes sense. So you can do that outside a slider, and you can do that outside any other exit door, if that makes sense. And we'll hop over here into the code as well. I want to show you that. So floor elevations at other exterior doors. So again, it's telling you right here, doors other than 
the required egress door shall be provided with landings and floors not more than seven and three quarters inches below the top of the threshold. Most of the time, doors swing in. And so then you can hop over to this exception. It says a top landing is not required where the stairway of not more than two risers is located on the exterior side of the door. So no more than two risers on the exterior side of the door, provided that the door does not swing over the stairway, right? So that's if you have a slider or if the door swings in, you can have those two risers on the outside. And then you would essentially just step right into your, into your house, to your flat landing, and you should be good to go. So hopefully that'll help you out a little bit on uh, just door requirements when you're swapping out doors uh, as part of your remodel or whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe you're building something new. Just keep that in mind. Uh, same thing would be true for any door, even in a shop, even in a garage. Make sure you get a landing on both sides, right? So if, if you got a shop that maybe you're building a pole barn or something, we, we, we get this a lot doing inspections, is... People are building pole barns and they have a, a side egress door. Well, on the outside, they need to make sure they have a landing on that outside and they don't have any more than that kind of one step down, right? And so they can use pavers, they can pour a little concrete pad right there, uh, bricks, anything that's solid, right? You want it to be a solid, non trippable landing. And then on the inside, you would assume that they would then step in onto their concrete floor. So then everything would be good. The door would normally swing in. They would step on the floor, have one step out if they needed it, or maybe there's a sidewalk that carries over to the house. Same would be true for any like accessory structures or anything like that. Just trying to make sure your entryways are safe and should be good to go. So there we go. That's a kind of quick rundown on egress doors, the requirements, and what's needed.